ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cosplay Chit Chat Show. I will be your host today. My name is Jess. I am here representing Costume and Play, and I am a duck today, guys, which I do apologise about, but sadly, I'm a little bit ill, so I'm, I'm hiding. I'm hiding as a duck. I am also joined by some absolutely fantastic people. We have a group here with us at this time, ladies and gentlemen, so please give a massive warm welcome to Badderstad Studios! Yay! Hello. 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 We will be chatting to the guys a little bit later on, but first off, we have some cosplay news to go through with you. But before that, we also want to talk a little bit about anything that you guys have been up to when it comes to cosplay projects from last week. So we have um, Tink has been working on a rock, and we have some. We have a little compilation to show you of Tink's rock. Um, which will explain a little bit about how it's made and it gives a really good example about how simple it is to do something like this. So this rock has basically been constructed from foam and paint. Um, it was a really simple build. Um, we're going to be releasing a tutorial video on the Costume and Play YouTube channel soon um, for how to make your own rock. So that's really exciting. But basically, this was just made with some foam, a foam cutter and some paints. And <coughs> starting from the top left, basically, you draw out the shape of the rock. This rock has been... Um, produced together in layers so it's lots of different bits of foam that are then stuck together um, once that's all glued you then take um, a foam cutter which is basically just um, a heat cutter there's a little um, wire inside that's that's hot that you can use for shaping um, you just get the general idea of the shape of the rock you want then you can start hacking out chunks and making it look a little bit more rock like and then after that you just sit and paint it so do let us know guys if there is anything that you've been working on in the chat um Matt, oh hello beefy hands welcome well commence the boop <laughs> oh dear so yeah do let us know guys if you've been working on anything this week guys have you been working on any interesting cosplay projects this week so many i think we've all been working on loads <laughs> um, um, we, actually, we actually did a live stream yesterday because we were all trying to craft so <laughs> Oh wow, the immense Bandersnatch crafting stream. So I know the guys are working on a good few things, including some really exciting stuff for Insomnia, which we will talk about a little bit later on. Before then, let's get on to the cosplay news, guys. So, EliteCon banning cosplayers from attending their event. What do we think about this one? Um, it's a bit of an odd one, isn't it? Um so EliteCon basically posted out on the 5th of March. Um, just one week to EliteCon, so a quick reminder in case you missed it along the way, there is no cosplay allowed at EliteCon. We appreciate cosplay, but we want to keep the focus on the collectibles for our event. So thank you in advance for adhering to this policy. <coughs> And then they've got a little quick poll, which is, are you planning to attend EliteCon? Um, and then they've posted this picture that just says, sorry, no cosplay allowed, which probably isn't great from PR standards. Um, I think this is a very difficult topic because there's a lot that we can talk about on both sides here. Um, obviously, I can completely understand and appreciate that it's their own convention if they want to make a space where they feel that you know potentially cosplay impacts them in a particular way or they're not happy about something in regards to the cosplay they are well within their rights to do so but the pr handling of it has been pretty bad to post a picture of somebody's cosplay and then to just write sorry no cosplay allowed on top of it is is not great um, it's pretty insulting, I think. So, yeah. Um, what do you guys think about this whole issue? Uh, I think it's funny that a convention called EliteCon has banned cosplay. Um, <laughs> mostly. Um, I, I get the point. If they wanted to focus it on more of the con experience, but for a lot of people nowadays, cosplay is part of the con experience. It's part of the community, so... It's. I, I can see why they do it, but I think they're going to lose a lot of congoers because of it. Yeah, I think I, it's a difficult one. Go on. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously we're biased because we're cosplayers. Yeah, I just I don't get how cosplaying is going to affect anyone else from enjoying the convention. Um, it's not like uh, 
dealers sell less if there's people dressed up as Pokemon or whatever yeah. at the con. It's not like, oh yeah, you sell 100% less, I don't know, Pokemon cards if there's Pokemon people dressed up there. It's not like they're stealing your revenue or the attention necessarily from your stuff. I feel like it's a bit of a shoot yourself in the foot kind of thing. Um, so I'll be interested to see how it kind of pans out after the event, mostly. See, to play devil's advocate, because I actually read a little bit about this one, apparently it's quite a small venue, and it's more of a like collectibles and toy fair. So the fact that they called it a con is probably the wrong name for it, and that's mm. probably why they've said we don't really want cosplay here. See, I can understand that if you have a small venue... And because one of the major, nothing else, one of the major things of cosplay is you have people stopping for photos all the time. And if you don't have the space, I can understand that. Still not sure. I, I, I still don't think I'd be going, but I understand it. I think yeah. they just called it the wrong name. If they called it like Elite Collectibles Fair or something, people wouldn't even think about cosplaying there. Yeah. Mm. Pretty much. I don't know. Yeah. If it was in Scotland, they probably would. Like, we don't have anything really up this end. So. You're like, hey, they're Asda's doing a signing or something. Everybody get your sh- fancy shoes out. Um, so <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's... But, yeah, it seems a bit well, weird. It's, it's, it is a convention that is also based in America. So obviously down here, cosplay isn't necessarily quite as popular as it is in America and around Europe. So it is a bit of a tough one there. Um because um, we, we have experience as well when it comes to some conventions, um, depending on how you advertise it, as Melmo's pointed out, um, sometimes you won't get any cosplay at all. Like if it's advertised as a kind of a comic collector's fair down here, um, then you won't get any cosplay. So, yeah, it is a very tough one. But do let me know what your thoughts are, guys, um, on this one. It's It's very interesting. I think there are many sides to it as well. <laughs> so yeah there we go guys that was the cosplay news um the last thing we we want to mention is that we had a fantastic guest on two weeks ago uh we didn't have a stream last week but two weeks ago we had panda riot 779 on and he was absolutely fantastic and he posted a little um thank you and a little um piece about the fact that he did a, a stream with us on his blog so thank you panda that was very nice of you um so we're gonna give you a shout on the stream so it will never end like we'll just keep posting about each other <laughs> so yeah um and now we can get to the meat of the cosplay chit chat show and um, today's topic is the play of cosplay and to discuss that with me i have the fantastic bandersnatch studio so you guys want to introduce yourselves and tell me a little bit about yourselves first and foremost okay uh i'll start because <laughs> i've been nominated <laughs> Um, I'm Mel, aka Seriously. Um, I've been cosplaying since 2013. I had to think back then. <laughs> um, but I've been a part of Banasat Studios for a good couple of, like, 2015, I'd like to say. Um, and basically, like, with Bandersatch, just kind of, we love just doing stuff all together as a group. Um, but, like, my probably my specialties would be something like probably more sewing rather than props. <laughs> And definitely not wigs. <laughs> <laughs> How about you guys? Um, I'm Luke, also known as uh, Xanth, um, and I kind of do a bit of everything, um, including fixing everyone's wigs. <laughs> um, so, um, like a little um, master of none, but like. A little bit of everything, kind of, is is my jam. Uh, I'm Sarah. I go by Saletta. And uh, I'm mostly painting props nowadays is what I, what I feel I shine at. And uh, apparently I have chameleon makeup face. And um, I have been cosplaying since 2008 and part of Bandersnatch for two years. And I just love the performance part of it, performance aspect. Uh, I'm Debbie. I'm known as Dark Fay. Um, I've been cosplaying since 2005. Um, again, band snatch for two years, and mostly my stuff is sewing. But I've been doing a bit of props now, so I'm making some beasties. It's fun. <laughs> 
So Bandersnatch Studios is basically made up of a whole load of people with some fantastic, fantastic skill sets. But one of the main things that they are most well known for is their videos. And we do have one of their videos that has recently gone viral, which is a makeup tutorial video, which we're going to show for you now. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Here we see you look pretty, pretty wig. There you go, 25. So explain to me a little bit about why this particular video went viral. Luck, Luke, you're up. And <laughs> luck. Um, we were one of the first people to do it. Um, I, that, that was literally it. Uh, getting a video that popular, especially in um, for a new anime, it's all about being one of the first folk to luck out and do it. Um, mm. We were quite lucky in that we had already done a Yuri on Ice video earlier um, in the season that kind of caught folks' attention pretty quickly. Um, not to the same extent, obviously, um, but it made that a couple more people were kind of keeping an eye on our channel that weren't already. And then when we brought this out, it was one of the first Victor um, makeup tutorials. So it just kind of took off just from the fact that people had already seen it so it had a high view count and it just kind of snowballed from there also you look really good in it so yeah, you do. <laughs> i was gonna say it, it really jumps on the the yuri or nice craze at the moment doesn't yeah. it i mean what is it about yuri or nice that is so popular for people at the moment why do Time they love it <laughs> i think it's for some folk, it's the kind of fan service aspect of it, but I think for a lot of, like, LGBT plus people, like, it's the fact that it actually shows a healthy same-sex relationship, um, yeah. which is yeah. quite unusual to see in anime. Um, so a lot of folk really kind of got on board with that. That And the music's amazing. And the animation um, is the, gorgeous. The animation's stunning. It's... Something that I was hooked from the second I saw like the intro, I was just like, damn, this is some good stuff. Like real <laughs> figure skaters have been watching Yuri on Ice and appreciating the routines. That's how what how that has how much thought went into the animations. Mm. Oh wow. So that makes a lot of sense as well because it kind of it, it I think videos like this really showcase what you guys are best at because I know that you do a lot of tutorial videos um for all different kinds of things from anything from you know what's in my com bag to you know how to do a full on makeup tutorial like this video here. Um 
And I think it's really brilliant that you have kind of so much depth and scope there and it really showcases all of you guys' skills. But it must have taken kind of a long while to figure out how to kind of put that together and who was good at what thing and things like that. So do you want to talk to me a little bit about that, about kind of how you come up with your tutorial videos, what kinds of videos that are on your channel around the kind of tutorial-esque space? Um, Tutorial-wise, sometimes it can be as simple as either we're going to be doing a character anyway, we're going to be doing a makeup test. You know what, let's film it. If it work, turns out quite well, we've got content. Um, if it doesn't, you delete it, you try again later. Um, that tends to be how a lot of the makeup tests go. Um, there's obviously things like planned tutorials that we do. Uh, we did a Warbler tutorial uh, at the start of last year, uh, which was obviously planned as uh, this is us doing an X tutorial this is what we want to show. Um, and then you have the ones that just sprang up like overnight all like Mel was saying, oh, I don't know how to get all this armor into my suitcase for insomnia. So I was like, you know what I'm going to film tonight? <laughs> I'm going to film <laughs> how to pack my suitcase for con. Um, um, yeah, if you guys want to see that, it'll be out next week. Oh, this week. Uh, later on this week. <laughs> I think as well sometimes it comes from other people asking us like especially with Mel's makeup so many people have asked about your mystique makeup it just came from that as well so oh it's yeah, not it's even like, sometimes it's, it's not even the public it's one of us going I don't know how to do this if you record it we can refer back to it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like the body paint one that we did because like I realized that for example, me, Luke and Alison all do body paint in completely different ways but we all wear body paint quite regularly. And I realised that if it was for three of us in the group of seven that all do body paint completely differently, like there must be other people that do things differently. And it just kind of made sense to do a body paint tutorial kind of in kind of a bit of a more kind of generalised area. Because people always ask, like, is it like people are saying, like, I'm, I'm at a con or on the page or something. People always ask about the body paint. <laughs> uh, the reason I, fo I filmed the uh, how to find things on eBay tutorial is because I have other people asking for my help to find things. I figured, well, I don't find this tricky, but other people obviously do. I can make a vid on this and it can help people. And I've already had at least one comment saying it did. So that made me happy. The tips in the search bar was really good with your eBay video. I Thank watched you. it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, there's so many search options. I didn't know this. We all no, I, that one. no one seems to. <laughs> I think it's brilliant, though, because I, I think what's really important to point out about this as a whole is the fact that this is stuff that you guys would do anyway. You're mm -hmm. just taking the fact that you do it and showcasing it to other people to help them do it and gain the experience they need. But it's also done in such a way where it, you don't. This is going to sound a bit weird, but I'll try and phrase it as best I can. You guys don't put yourselves across as, as, as cosplay experts to follow. Oh, just oh, oh, oh. Across as regular cosplayers that cosplay, that go through challenges as much as you find success, um, as much as you succeed. And it, it's almost like your group acts as, as a showcase piece for what the cosplay scene is, which is a bunch of people, get, you know, sitting down, figuring out the best way to do things, sharing tips, sharing skills, um, sharing the best ways to kind of do things, um, which I think is lovely. Um, and I think, uh, what would you say is is the most important part of that in terms of showcasing the fact that, you know, you guys are just, you're cosplay people and you like having fun with what it is that you're doing? Like, the thing is well, for us is that we are, like, really good friends as a group anyway. So, and that comes across, I think, in a lot of our videos and a lot of our stuff. And, like, we are just regular folk that are trying to figure things out, trying to do new things with cosplay, trying to do different things. And, like, we'll ask each other. So, if we're asking each other, other people must also be asking these questions as well. Hmm. So, we'd rather just be like, do you know what? We've had loads of help from other people over the years. Like, let's share some of that. If we can help other folk, that'd be great, you know. And I love, like, we all love doing panels and like doing videos and stuff it to try and help hard. other people. Yeah, we're, we're not afraid to, sh afraid to share mistakes um, amongst ourselves, partly because the others <laughs> will find it hilarious, uh, <laughs> and partly because they might have a good idea on how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And we just because you've run short on ideas doesn't mean everyone else has. We always say, so. like, do as we say, not as we do, because like, we, <laughs> we are a little bit like cosplay crash test dummies. 
everything <laughs> that we recommend is usually for a good reason. It's usually because we did it wrong the first time ourselves. And it Trying was an it out so you don't have to. A painful mistake. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah. It's also the part that like we like watching as well. Like if we're watching a con vlog or something and something goes wrong, we enjoy watching that. So we not, always kind of think not in like a masochistic way. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in a mean way, but like, you know, if I see if I see a cosplayer on their vlog with like no makeup on, then I feel better about the fact that I'm on the vlog looking awful most of the time. <laughs> because I've got no makeup on, I'm half blue or whatever. You know, I it's just... nice to know that the people you're watching are human. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah that makes a lot of sense i think that is a great comment as well i think the other thing as well is that uh, going back to the fact that you guys do do a lot of cosplay um, and you absolutely love it uh one of the things that you were also most famous for is your characterization panels and the fact that you take a cosplay character and um, you really bring it to life and you really explore the play element of cosplay um, by putting the characters into different scenes and scenarios. So we do have a compilation um, from you that explains how much fun it is to cosplay as a group. So we're going to give that a little bit of a watch. Exciting. <laughs> Show some motherfucking solid I'm over that. I'm over that. Did you survive it? Did you survive it? Curse. An amazing amount of these start outtakes. <laughs> There's a bin in the background. Stop! <laughs> Move no, the bin! Okay, I'll leave it there. Okay, leave it there. Continuity! Put the bin back! Eddie Vandals. The camera is shaking. Can you just do that? It's still my face. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cat! <laughs> cat in the shop! Move the pussy! <laughs> it's not that kind of film! <laughs> well then! Well, This bit will never die. Still my favourite bit from any panel. Uh, <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I was very tired by the time it stopped. Do you want to go first and then no, I'll No, no, I don't want to follow you because I just saw you in the camera and you look really good and I look like a mess. <laughs> it's like boy band generous in that hobo that like around the corner that they sometimes call hog. I'm having a moment. Shh, you're really pretty, okay? And I'm just like... Oh, we need to get an end that's definitely wrong so we can smash it over Debbie's head. Just crack it over 
Mel, I'm definitely not sober in this Mel, video. Mel, Mel. I'm seriously spoiled. <laughs> Side of the garden. <laughs> I was so tired filming that shot. <laughs> Everyone was so tired by the time we filmed that shot. <laughs> that was end of calm. At least I had to sit down. You had to sit down, there's a difference. <laughs> you wrecked yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys. Um, nice one for you to go to start with how much fun is it to cosplay as a group and more importantly why and how can other people enjoy cosplaying together um i don't know how to not cosplay as a group anymore yeah. like it's like the support network and just i'm sorry watching that video always makes me dead emotional i'm just like i'm <laughs> such <laughs> nice friends <laughs> oh. um but yeah it's I can't imagine not cosplaying with a group of people anymore um doing it on your own must be really really hard um I can see it being really nerve-wracking because you don't know anyone yeah <laughs> the thing I would always say and bear in mind basically I met every but well we all kind of met each other through cons apart from me and Debbie who knew each other beforehand <laughs> everybody else we met through cons so my thing is always go to a con and be social with people and like go chat to new people go find new people and you know find other people that are cosplaying the same thing you know ask to take pictures of cosplayers you know be social and talk to other people because that's how you find other people with the same interests that could potentially do a group with you that's how we've all met like Bailing don't presume that. that just because people don't you don't have cosplayers near you that you can't have a cosplay group of friends no Alison, Blair and I live in Scotland. Mel lives in the Midlands. And then we have two down in Bristol. Like, that's that's not close. We're not, like, just wander out and have coffee levels of, like... We are in actual different countries. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, but, like, the next six months we have one con a month together. Yeah. So... <laughs> Is, however we'll regret <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if you're ever stuck at a convention and you see mel go and find her and talk to her she'll just like mel will talk to anyone <laughs> literally she yeah. knows all of england yeah and that's because you you're gonna meet her this year <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i just love cosplaying as a group because you can always bounce off people i like um in in the uh, when i first met mel uh, I was with a friend and we have a tendency to drop in and out of character the whole time and we confused Mel so much at first. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mel and Deb, because if nothing else, we were, we're horrible people who keep switching characters with no warning. Um, <laughs> but that's the, that, that's the way I operate. It's, I'm so glad that I've now got a whole group of friends that I can do this with. And it, it, it just makes my, con, it makes my cons. That's why I do cons for, is the group. 
like we do with the panels and stuff as well so should we do in character stuff like there's times when you're not feeling it and you're not feeling very well or something else has gone on and you're not necessarily feeling being in that character other people will know and they will support you like that's what's really nice about our group as well is like we know like Alison had it last Alcon when very we, sick she was very very sick before the Night Vale panel we thought an hour beforehand she might not actually make it and she's like one of the yeah. main characters and she would be gutted if she missed it she made it but we knew she was very delicate so we looked after her and made sure that a lot of questions came elsewhere yeah. <laughs> to the other folk because yeah. we were like she needs some looking after it meant that Kevin was even more manic than usual yeah <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Bless. So I, I think one of the key things there as well is that um, you guys are uh, are an entity almost, you could say, because at the end of the day, you have a name. You are Bandersnatch Studios. You are a, a, a kind of a designated amount of people that have decided to come together and give yourselves an entity and a brand and a presence uh, for what it is that you do. Would you say that that's any different to getting together as a group of friends? Should other people maybe look to kind of form entities or friendship groups or... I it depends what we, you want at, to do with it. At the like, end of the day, we're first and foremost just a bunch of friends who have the same hobby. It just happens that how our hobby manifests is we're all creative types. So not only do we make our costumes, but we like creating content um, as part of that to like stretch the limbs of that hobby a little bit further. Um, so it's really up to you. If you want to give your friendship group a name, like you give your Facebook chat groups a name, don't you? Like what's, what's really the difference? We've got business yeah, cards. That's literally it. <laughs> it, it, it it's whether you want to, have it as an official thing or whether you just want to mess around with your mates i mean there's no saying you can't do both but i mean even some solo cosplayers have their own sort of brand and things i mean a lot of people now have cosplay pages so it depends what you want to do with it most of the banders have got individual cosplay pages most of us i'll get around to it <laughs> <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. So speaking of which, we have a um, a CMV that Bandersnatch Studios has put together um, and we have a compilation of them. And this goes into the filming and editing work that Bandersnatch Studios, in terms of creating that content, um, goes towards as well. So we're going to have a little look at that. Much of my face, man. Much of my face. I love this location so much. Mm -hmm. Buckland House is beautiful, and I was very happy to go to film there. Girl, we've got work to do. A pass of the wand or two. Perfect isn't easy, but it's me. When one knows the world is watching, one does what one must. Some minor adjustments, darling, not for my vanity, but for humanity, each little oh. step proposed. This footage actually took a very long time to get edited I couldn't listen to my voice anymore Sometimes after the recording all day. Too much for even me. Four people get out of bed up about me. But to when all about of the world says volumes. yes, then who am I to say no? Can't clean a mud to shine like a pure blood. No, sir, you need a pro. Not a chip or a flaw People staring in awe La da -de -da. I do like that Perfection dress Perfection yeah, becomes me kind of Nesfa Unrivaled Unruffled I'm beauty unleashed <laughs> Yeah Jaws drop Hard stop So classic so and classy We're not talking lassie Over where I need to see to edit it And I <laughs> Though many 
my house is not my not name and gold. Uh, They're barking up the wrong tree. You I'm pretty boys you all over the me. city. No I have your hearts and you have my pity. Pretty is nice, but still, it's I'm just pretty. Bitch you. Perfect, my dears, is me. Going up and down those stairs, man, to reshoot and reshoot. I was dying. <laughs> Absolutely dying. I still oh, love man. how you recorded all your vocals, though. I was like, yay! Well, the original is very dog themed, so I kind of had to <laughs> record it. Apart from one line, which I couldn't figure out how to rhyme it, so I thought I'll just keep Lassie in and get a shot of Mel. That'll work. <laughs> Rude. But yeah, I think that is really what kind of defines you as Bandersnatch Studios as opposed to just a group of friends that cosplay is the fact that you do do this very tailored, very stylized kind of CMV content as well as the tutorials and everything else that you put out. Um, I know that you guys have particular roles as well when it comes to creating it on the content front as much as on the cosplay front. So can you guys walk me through... Um, putting together one of your CMVs, how it starts and um, kind of how you go about putting one together? Well, one, one of the, ma- the major thing that starts it is that someone comes up with an idea and will normally put, go to the others and go, Debbie. guys, guys, guys. Sarah or Debbie. <laughs> it's audience, admittedly. Um, <clears throat> normally, if I'm the one writing it, I will then have the entire group looking at me and going, you're a bad person uh, because I write the Sarah angst. Sarah doesn't like happiness. <laughs> you know, that was really happy for Sarah to do a video uh, like that. That's yeah, a character. I, that's actually <laughs> usual for me, that CMB. It has no crying. Uh, <laughs> but we'll come up with. Uh, for us, it's from finding a song that evokes a certain character or a certain scene. Yeah. And um, we'll then sit there, work it out, figure out a shot list. Shot lists are your friends. Does I mean, Ren does them like actually written out, which is brilliant. I tend to do doodles and then get Sarah to translate for me. <laughs> I, I am the debut translator. Um, after we've got a rough shot, shot list or ge- general idea of what we want to do, we'll fire it off to the others, see how they want to get involved, what characters they've got that will uh, work well with this, what they need to bring for the shoot. Uh, and it do- it does depend whose baby it is, how much they are taking control. Like um, sometimes it is we will hand it over to someone else to direct. Like when we were shooting the X Men CMV, because <laughs> the rest of us were all in shot, we gave we gave Luke the list of what we wanted, and then got Let him got go. it, and got I screamed. Him <laughs> I held uh, the camera and shook for three hours. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Because that, that was actually it was really tricky with the sister CMV, is that I was directing and being the only person on camera, and so it was really tricky to sort of get the angles that I wanted while not being able to see the camera to get the angles I wanted. Mm. So, um, but yeah, uh, everyone gets uh, everyone gets involved when they can. We pretty much all edit now, which is great when we have the final footage. That makes our lives a lot easier because it can be passed around. No, no particular person has to have all their time spent on it. We tend um, to find that whoever came up, especially the CMV with a lip sync, you came up with it. It's your fault for making the lips match <laughs> the lyrics. Like, yeah. I find you it's brought this into the world, you deal with it. <laughs> it, it. It tends to be as well that the person whose idea it was, if they edit it, they've got a better idea of how they want it to come out. Mm. And they can make it flow better that way. Uh, I, I would say most of the actual ideas they'll, they'll they'll come from someone, mostly us. Uh, we'll ping it around the people, develop the idea, see how where we're going going with it, and then when we've got when we're at the location, we'll just keep recording, 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 trying to get multiple copies of each shot, see how it comes together when we edit it. Yeah. So. And that that is one of the struggles of having everyone across the country is you kind of gotta do it whilst you have everyone there. Yeah, we we have we have to plan when we want to record certain videos because we're going to need people there. 
Um, yeah, usually as long as we feed Mel coffee, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Have to make the Mel awake. The 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 X-Men C and B. Yeah, I had to be out of a coffee Sorry. break. <laughs> oh, f- not as much as the uh, Firefly. Firefly. <laughs> Firefly took about three times as long to film as it should have done. Partly because you have me filming and I'm not the greatest at filming. <laughs> you did good. Yeah, you did fine. Uh, no, some people I, are... think, I think the thing that you have to remember as well is the, the amount of skill sets that that takes because obviously you're making or piecing together the costumes and then you have an idea for how you want to film it and then you've got to edit it and then you've got to direct it etc 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 the amount of skills it takes there and then on top of that you very much play your characters it's it's not like you're going out and um you're filming one of these cosplay music videos although they are brilliant i'm very scared i'm gonna have sneaky zebra come after me <laughs> two things <laughs> um but let's just put this up here shall we there we go <laughs> sorted um but, you know, obviously when they're filming those kind of videos, um, they find particular cosplays and they have particular shots that work with cosplays. But it's not like you have to kind of um, plan um, where somebody needs to be to make a particular shot translate. Um, yeah. For instance, I think it was in your X-Men CMV, you have this brilliant shot of, I can't remember the character's names, but it's the one that can't touch anyone because otherwise she kills Rogue. somebody. Yep, Rogue, that's the one. And she covers her mouth because she's trying to kiss the guy that he likes. Yeah, that if you, yeah there well, you go. Well, that, that, that's a shot that exists in the comics and that Debbie's always been fond of anyway, so we mm. thought we'd slip it in. I think Ren suggested that one, actually. Ren might have suggested yeah. that one. Uh, but that is that one is actually canon from the comics, so we thought we'd add it in. You know why Ren suggested that one? Because I didn't know they were going to gambit. <laughs> They promised me Negasonic and they gambited in Yeah, so there the, 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 were sneaky, the, the, the as, sneaky gambits. As you do. <laughs> we like surprising each other. Get a Mostly gambit. Deadly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, think, I think that's brilliant. Um, so how much time would you say it takes to go from concept to product when it comes to filming the CMVs? It depends if you're doing it all yourself or yeah. like I've done like, CMVs in a day and I've had ones where we've worked on them as a team and it's been a long term project. We're talking like maybe six months for from I have this idea of all but we need to film it at this place. Yeah. So we're gonna wait till the next time we're all at X place to do it. Yeah. I, um the Christmas CMV where it was Miss Piggy uh fighting metaton we literally came up with the concept and recorded and edited it within about two days i think um Roughly, yeah uh compared to some of the others where we knew we'd need more people we knew we need the location and you are talking months like the x-men location shoot where we had to actually ask permission from the national trust uh, yes that, kind of uh, that that would be the my eyes cmv cherick yeah. cmv that one took a lot of prep because we had to wait for people to get down we had to check get permission from the location we had to uh figure out when we we're going to have decent uh weather that was luck that was luck <laughs> admittedly um and then we had to, and then we had to figure out which bits we wanted to record at home which bits we needed to record outside and we had to freeze for five hours oh god you were so cold so <laughs> cold. cold water bottle for you guys <laughs> um but yeah it, it honestly depends on the cmv that makes a lot of sense. I think that's some really good tips there as well. So do we get to know what CMV you have planned next or am I being cheeky and that's a secret? <laughs> uh, well, I can think of two we have yeah. in the works um, if the others are happy for us to talk about them. Go for it. Uh, Debbie and I are planning another Cherick CMV because it's her fault. <laughs> uh, uh at Sci-Fi Weekend, uh, we are hopefully going to shoot one that Debbie's had the concept for for quite a while. Over a year. <laughs> yeah. Because um, it should, it, if, if, it, if it doesn't have quite the right location there, we're pretty sure we're in walking distance of a good one. Uh, and that is going to be to do with, as it is lovingly known, the beach divorce from first class. And the other one we have planned is a Marauders CMV. And um, that's Ren's baby. Oh, yeah, that is Ren's baby. And that is going to happen when we go to Glasgow. Oh, that makes sense. Glasgow University is basically Hogwarts. 
Oh yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's how Luke and Alison got us to go up there. Is they're like, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by pictures. The way, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear right ladies and gentlemen we're going to go for a quick five minute break when we come back we're going to be doing the quick fire question round with Bandersnatch Studios and afterwards we'll be talking to them a little bit about where you can see them live and in the flesh is that right they're going to be coming down and guesting with us for Insomnia Gaming Festival and we have lots planned together there for what the guys are going to be doing we will also be sharing with you what the cosplayer of the week is and talking to you a little bit about the Cardiff meetup that is coming up on the 25th of March so I'll see you in five minutes guys bye Hello ladies and gentlemen and we are back to the cosplay chit chat show. I do apologise that the break was a little bit longer than intended. Sadly I was having some really bad technical issues but it's okay. I think I have fixed them now. Um, so <laughs> welcome back to the stream guys. Um, I am joined here by the absolutely wonderful Bandersnatch Studios. Woo! Woo! Exciting! And we're going to be going into our quick fire question round. So what we'll do is we'll start on the bottom. So we'll start with you, Luke, and then we'll go around ah. in anti-clockwise fashion. And the aim of this is that you answer the question with one sentence as quick as you can. So question one, how long have you been oh, cosplaying? No. Uh, Eight-ish years, I think. <laughs> I can't count. <laughs> Seven or eight years, I'm not sure. Somewhere along those lines. That's yeah. not one sentence, Luke. <laughs> I can't count. I just said that. It's all right. This this never goes well. It's the whole fun of it. Right, Melmo, <laughs> how long have you been cosplaying for? Uh, four years. Boy, you two. Hmm. It's a letter. That'll be me. Uh, sorry. It's late. Ten years. Eleven years. Oh wow, eleven years is the winner. That is a long time <laughs> for cosplay. She I'm she's sorry, to blame you... for me getting into it. You must <laughs> have been fault. around when like cosplay wasn't the cool hip thing to do then. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goodness me. So, what kind of cosplayer do you consider yourself? A uh, performer. Performer. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, casual. <laughs> no, I'm sticking with that answer. I'm not changing. <laughs> <laughs> I still think I'm a newbie. I'm still a newbie to this whole thing. Yeah, I feel like as soon as you start thinking that you know everything about cosplay, that's when your foam catches fire. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> when you find out you left the solder and iron on in a pile of tissues, it's fine. It's not <laughs> some guy that'll get us. Uh, Terrible at leaving the hob on. Cosplay, crossplay, or both. Oh, for me at the moment, it's decidedly cosplay only. Both, because I think I've got now got an even number of male and female cosplays. I'm gonna lean towards crossplay. No, uh, both. I actually, do more female now than I used to do. So, why do you cosplay? There's just so much you can do with it um have having fun and meeting people uh messing around in costume um my friends and having fun basically and finally what is your biggest cosplay pet peeve oh i don't know I'm really salty in general, so I've got a lot of pet peeves. Um, <laughs> um, 
can can we come back to me well I... <laughs> um mine is just other people not being considerate i think like just be nice uh being told it's not a real cosplay if it's casual um elitism it bugs me <laughs> Back yeah, shitty cosplayers, people that are just like mean for no reason. You're just like, calm, yeah. calm, you're, you're still a grown ass adult dressed as a fictional character. Cam you, Jimmy's. Okay, guys, and finally, you are all going to be coming up and guesting at Insomnia Gaming Festival, and you are going to be putting on the cosplay live experience. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, talk to me a little bit about what it is, what you're going to be doing while you're guesting. You've got lots of panels. It's going to be really exciting. Talk to me. So much. We're going to be doing so much. <laughs> <laughs> so many things. <laughs> Um, basically, we're going to be kind of embodying the whole cos like play of cosplay thing. Um, in that they- we will be bringing the sort of cosplay live experience. So like every morning, we'll be kind of showing how we get into costumes. So it might be like a little makeup demo. It might be um, like one of us getting into armor. It like little sort of bits and pieces, just kind of having a chat through of what we actually do to get into cosplay. Because um, again, it's different for everybody. Um, we'll have some little demos going on at our table. Um, so I have loads of different bits and pieces going on there and we've got loads of different panels Um, so do you want to talk about panels Luke? Um, We've got a really cool one planned for this Saturday um, where we're going to have a very sort of medieval dragon agey Skyrim um, kind of audience participation thing going on where you can See if you're ready to join one of the mercenary troops that we uh, will be hiring for. Um, see see how that's going to go for you. So that'll be fun. Um, and we're also going to be doing some more tutorial style panels with um, a fil- sort of filming for YouTube um, and then editing as well. So you can get to follow that progress through. We're also oh, yeah. talking a little bit about characterization as well. So like how to actually get into character and sort of do that as well with some um, examples and different bits and pieces. Um, I was going to say, we're probably going to be shooting like a, a cosplay showcase, which we then do the live edit for, I think it's on the Sunday. So yeah, come along, get your faces on, on the screen. And uh... there are going to be multiple of us probably wandering around with cameras. Yep. <laughs> Um, we're always kind of filming everything so like feel free to come up and chat to us as well at our table and um, we'll have a little table there um, with loads of different props and different bits and pieces on there sort of showing off what we do um, so feel free like if you're at Insomnia come say hi come chat to us and we don't know, bite we don't bite <laughs> we're very nice really and we'll tell you exactly how we've gone wrong in our costumes I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah we're really looking forward to Insomnia um, it should be a really really good time so come and say hi to us Thank you so much to Bandersnatch Studios and thank you so much for joining us here on the stream today as well. Have you had fun? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's good. So next up, we're just going to be moving along to our cosplayer of the week, who is Ash Cosplay, who will also be coming along to Insomnia Gaming Festival with us and guesting. (coughs) Ash will be heading up the sewing zone, um, along with Jenny Mew cosplay. So it's going to be, basically, Insomnia is the place to be. If you want cosplay, come to Insomnia. We've got a tea ceremony. We've got, goodness, what else have we got? We've got natural dye making, chain mail making. Um, we've got all of the elements of cosplay that you love. So we've got props. Um, we've got sewing. We've got masquerade. We've got demos. You can even make your costume um in uh, you can design your own costume in 360 degrees using the vive it's crazy like if anything cosplay related get yourself down to insomnia because it's going to be all of the hype (laughs) speaking of other upcoming events as well we also have the cardiff geek up meetup which is going to be coming to cardiff um on the 25th of march and it's predominantly going to be based around um the cardiff bay uh, and one of the reasons that we really wanted to put the meetup on is because the Doctor Who experience 
um, which is down near Cardiff Bay, is on and it's going to be closing soon. So we wanted to give you guys the opportunity to go and see it if you did want to go and see the Doctor Who experience. We also have a myriad of activities planned for me, everything from park games and getting to know each other in our usual meetup circle um, to going out for dinner. And there is even a rock bar on the cards. So it's going to be a really fantastic event. And then finally, um, we are teaming up with Geek Fest once again for Geek Fest. Swansea that's going to be on the 29th of April and um, I am really excited for this event we have some crazy crazy things going on some amazing amazing guests and um, including Fuzzbutt cosplay um, who's going to be coming down doing a few kind of big bills and things like that we're going to have Russell um, there's so many more guests I don't think I could even name them all it's going to be crazy uh, we've got Michael who is a um, set and props designer um, for the theatre um, so he's going to be coming down as well basically it's convention season there's a lot going on please do keep following our channels and you can follow our social media and as per usual the links will be in the chat and while I'm putting those in guys where can people find you and follow you uh, you can find us under Bandersnatch Studios that's Bander with a U not an E because then otherwise you'll find a glass blowing company based out of Seattle um, on YouTube and on Facebook um, so we don't really have um, a group Instagram or Twitter um, so they're really the best places to find us um, we have twice uh, weekly video uploads on Wednesdays and on Sundays. Um, now that con season's getting going, we have uh, a Sunday live stream going, um, which is kind of a sort of con crunch, bitch and stitch kind of thing, where we answer your questions, we work along with stuff, um, and you can kind of find out what's kind of going on with us um, really up to date, um, as well as just following for stills and stuff on the Facebook page and finding it when these uh, live streams and videos and bonus content and stuff like that are going to go up. <laughs> Beefy says, Bandy Boop come Bob Snudge. <laughs> Hi, hey, Bethan. Hi, Bethan. <laughs> 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 which i think is rather excellent brilliant once again a massive thank you to every one of you guys for coming on and joining us for this fantastic bandersnatch studios live stream it has been an absolute blast and it's been an absolute pleasure having you here please do come down to insomnia to come and meet the guys you will not regret it and take care we will see you next monday when we will have another guest and another stream bye guys bye bye, bye.